Hey guys, so today I want to focus in on the Chrysler brand. A lot of you guys comment about Chrysler, and I do find myself wondering why are they doing so poorly these days, as well as what should they be doing to fix their situation. So that's really the topic for discussion for today. I want to look at where Chrysler was in the past and their past success, how they are currently doing with respect to their sales and vehicle lineup, and then look at what they should be doing to improve their situation. So let's jump right into it. There's no doubt about it, Chrysler has definitely seen better days. Sales really picked up steam in the late 1990s, but the early 2000s into the Daimler Chrysler era saw an explosion for the brand with tons of growth and a peak of almost 650,000 sales in the calendar year of 2005. Things dipped down again near the bankruptcy era around 2009, but then the sales did steadily rise up again until 2015 to over 324,000. Unfortunately, the brand barely clears a third of that production today as sales fell down another 23.49% to just 126,971 vehicles produced for 2019. The major reason for that decline in sales is the reduction in Chrysler's lineup. Throughout most of the 2000s, they had 6 to 8 vehicles in their lineup. The 300, Crossfire Coupe, Pacifica or Aspen SUV, PT Cruiser, Sebring Sedan, Town & Country Minivan, and more. But if you look at today's lineup, if you visit Chrysler.com, they will show you four vehicles if you press on the models. However, they are just trying to appear bigger than they are. The 300 is the only remaining car, while the Pacifica is their other vehicle. The Hybrid is still a Pacifica model, while the Voyager is a bit of a marketing scheme where they are just keeping the old Pacifica look when the refreshed Pacifica comes out in 2021 calling it a Voyager, and that's essentially going to be a base model. So Chrysler just has about two vehicles left in their small lineup today. The brand has been called the family-friendly people-mover brand, as described by former CEO Sergio Marchion, so it's important to remember that going forward in this video, the future plans do need to adhere to that goal. So now let's take a deeper look at the current sales. Again, in 2019, they sold just over 126,000 cars across the whole brand, that is the worst sales total in decades, and apart from 2018, these are the worst sales years ever since the recession in 2009, where Chrysler still sold more, over 177,000 cars. So this is becoming a pretty dire situation for Chrysler, and they are only able to remain profitable due to the older platforms that they are using. If we look at the Chrysler 300, sales are shrinking every single year, dropping down into the 40,000s in 2018, and then it took another hit of 37.3% down to 29,213 for 2019. The longevity of this car is far from assured, and there have been rumors for years about the car being cancelled. The large car market also dropped down from 4.9% of the industry in 2010 to just 1.3% by 2019. The 300 is still offered for 2020, but many dealerships are only getting a couple of them, if any, and there's a quite a bit of incentives on them. There have been virtually zero changes since the 2015 model year, and the platform is getting outdated and less exciting by the day. So we will have to wait and see what happens to the 300, but it's still here for the time being. Chrysler currently offers about 5 models, and they either come with the 3.6 liter V6, with between 292 to 300 horsepower, or the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi, with 363 horsepower and 394 pound-feet of torque. All-wheel drive is available on the V6 only, and every model has an 8-speed automatic, and the prices begin around $29,000 US and rise up to over $42,000. As for the Pacifica sales, they are better, but they still dropped 17.4% from $118,000 in 2018 to just under $98,000 in 2019. Chrysler started the US minivan market in 1983 by launching the Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager, and the minivan segment was booming by 2005, selling over 1.2 million vehicles. But by 2019, it's down to just 400,000 vehicles, under 3% of the auto industry market share. So this is another declining segment, but Chrysler is still pushing their Pacifica. But at least as more of the competition abandoned the segment, Chrysler can kind of sell more Pacificas, so it could be a positive for them going forward. They also have refreshed the car for 2021, so that's coming out soon, with a sporty and aggressive look, a more premium and luxurious interior, tons of new technology, and all-wheel drive for the first time on a Pacifica since 2004. There will be the 3.6 liter V6 again, with 287 horsepower as the gas engine and a 9-speed automatic, and also a hybrid model will carry over as well, with a dual-motor E-Flight electrically variable transmission and a modified version of the 3.6 liter gas engine, giving 260 horsepower in total, along with an all-electric range of 30 miles and a total range of 500 miles.
Pricing starts around $33,000 and will rise up to almost $50,000 for the best models. And as I mentioned, the Chrysler Voyager nameplate is returning for 2020 models, which is just a more affordable Pacifica. It will still carry the old design once the new 2021 Pacificas are released. It has the same engine, transmission, and body, but it's just more bare bones with less premium features. There will be an entry-level model, costing $27,000, and then one up from that, costing $30,000. So knowing all that, what does Chrysler need to do to remain relevant and turn around their brand? I've got five reasons that we're going to get into right now. So the first thing to do is revamp the car and increase the advertising for the 300. This is something that just doesn't make any sense to me. Chrysler does not market the 300 at all, nor do they give it any improvements whatsoever. Say what you want about the 300, but it is an iconic vehicle for the brand, and it still sold well over 50,000 units until 2017. The only reason that there's talk of dying is because Chrysler themselves are slowly killing it. They took away the SRT model after 2014 for North America, even though it exists in other markets globally, and have not revamped any exterior or interior features in five years, only adding very small packages here and there. The Charger and Challenger still ride on the same platform, and they still sell like hotcakes, due to their fun and desirable additions. You got Hellcats, wide bodies, custom stripes, and wheels, blacked out body pieces, and a lot more, all straight from the factory. If Dodge sold the same Charger since 2015, without adding any of those improvements or marketing the vehicle, it would probably be dying as well. So Chrysler needs to add something to the 300, change the trim levels, create a stir by reintroducing the SRT model, or partner up with a big celebrity to promote the vehicle. We all see the power of social media and YouTube, where a lot of vehicles like the Hellcats get endless attention, so Chrysler needs to get some of that attention onto the 300. And as for the older platform, so what? Just ride that out, since it's already a golden goose, or a cash cow if you call it. And uh, until you have the new platform for the Charger and Challenger, which is expected after 2023, then you can introduce a new 300 alongside those vehicles, or decide to cancel it at that point. The second thing Chrysler needs to do is bring back more vehicles. Obviously sales are lower with just the two vehicles in the lineup, so Chrysler simply needs more. If they don't add more vehicles to the lineup, the brand will slowly die and eventually end up with probably just a Pacifica. But that won't be an issue if more money is invested into Chrysler. They should be looking to add a mid-sized Chrysler crossover to replace the Dodge Journey, which makes perfect sense as Dodge focuses on more performance instead. The ongoing merger with Group PSA, to be completed in early 2021, also gives Chrysler more vehicle options that can align with their People Mover brand. Opel's got the widely popular Corsa Super Mini, which sells over 220,000 units a year in Europe. There's also the Crossland X and Grandland X SUVs. Peugeot also has some nice hatchbacks, like the 208, as well as the 3008 and 5008 SUVs. Now I understand that these are not directly suited for North America, because their powertrains are slow as balls for what we're used to. But if Chrysler could throw, say the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 in there, or the Pacificus hybrid system, I believe these vehicles could work as they look great, and they would fit in with Chrysler's classy style, but also carry a bunch of people around to fit the brand regime. So they should be looking to add a crossover, a bigger SUV, and maybe a smaller hatchback as well. I will say though that these vehicles would only be a success if they add value within the existing FCA lineup, so they would need to be different than other models that Dodge or Jeep might already offer. The third strategy Chrysler can use is to leverage their brand history by reviving an old nameplate, and they've got a lot to choose from no matter what vehicle type. 200, Aspen, Crossfire, Delta, Neon, Town & Country, Ypsilon, Voyager, heck, even the PT Cruiser. Not only would a new vehicle create excitement, but reviving one of these names would generate a ton of attention as there are millions of people who already know the name or have owned the car in the past. Even if you weren't interested in buying the new car, I'm sure many of you would still check it out to see what it's all about, because I know I would. Next thing on my list today is for Chrysler to leverage the merger with Group PSA. PSA CEO Carlos Tavares had established a 10-year goal of reintroducing Peugeot and Citroën to the US market in 2016, so the merger could open up some more opportunities for Chrysler in this regard down the road. And it would make sense for PSA to bring over their Peugeots and rebrand them as Chryslers. To further explain, I have a quote from John McElroy, who is the host of Autoline, and he says, I imagine Peugeot would like to export some of its vehicles to the US and brand them as Chryslers. While Carlos Tavares wanted to relaunch the Peugeot brand in the US, why do it now when he would compete against the part of his own company? And why spend hundreds of millions in advertising to try and establish a brand name that Americans can't pronounce? 
So his answer is to simply rebrand Peugeot as Chrysler's and that will help out both companies. And to me it totally makes sense to keep the Chrysler brand around, but maybe infuse some new to us Peugeots in there, ones that might fit the people moving brand positioning that Chrysler is going for, like we already talked about, like the 208, 508, some of those smaller cars, or some of the SUVs. Now the final reason may not appeal to the hardcore car and Chrysler enthusiasts, but it is a realistic need going forward so I figured I should talk about it. And that would be the electrification and future mobility concepts, something that both Chrysler and FCA as a whole are far, far behind their competitors. Former CEO Sergio Marchion was short-sighted in seeing no short-term profit in these developments, and he just preferred to continue to sell SUVs, pickups, and crossovers at a big profit, as long as the oil prices remained low. However, now is the time to turn Chrysler into a more innovative brand like they used to, and invest in new technology for the future. So they've already got the Pacifica plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, they already supply Waymo with Pacifica models for self-driving testing, so that is a great start. And again, Chrysler can also use PSA's electrification technology in their vehicles as well. Overall, this could accomplish a brand differentiation strategy, where again, Chrysler is building on their people mover status by moving these people, but now in a more environmentally friendly way, and focusing more on electric and hybrid SUVs and CUVs, allowing Chrysler to become a true innovator once again. So to conclude, I know Chrysler has slipped from the top of our minds when we think of new vehicles here in North America, but I still believe there is time to save and revive this historic brand as we've discussed. I totally think it's still possible too, but only if Stellantis is willing to commit the time and resources to doing so, as Fiat did not seem to invest it in that regard. So that's the end of this video. There's a whole lot on the table that I laid out for you guys. What do you make of all the information? Do you think Chrysler will last for a while and turn things around? Or are they entering their final days? Can they be saved or are they doomed? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I know that was a ton of information, but hopefully you were able to follow along okay. I always try to organize things as best as I could. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.